time for questions the Minister for Regional Development and we'll start first with oral questions. And question number 10 has been withdrawn. Kieran McCarthy. Mr McCarthy. Thank you Mr Speaker. Question number one to the Minister please. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, with your permission, uh, I wish to group uh, both question one and four uh, on this occasion because they are related to the same subject, and I will give joint response to both members to so ask your indulgence. Uh, my, my department is currently coordinating a cross departmental pilot project to test the concept of improved in integration of publicly funded transport s services uh, in the Dungannon area. One of the key aims of this project is to improve passenger services and to identify the potential for making operational efficiencies through better use of vehicles, drivers and technology. Members will be aware from previous discussions that this work is quite complex, and I believe that the Committee for Regional Development has also recently heard from the various stakeholders how complex this issue is. As a result, the project is taking a measured approach to testing various opportunities for integration during the pilot period, which is similar to the approach that has been adopted in other jurisdictions. The areas that will be examined include better integration of TransLink and Southern Educational Library Board School Transport Services, transport ser TransLink Services and the Rural Community Transport Partnerships demand responsive services, Rural Community Transport Partnerships and School Transport Services, Southern Health Trust and Southern Education and Library Board Services for Pupils and Adults with Special Needs, Southern Health Trust and Rural Community Transport Partnership Services, um, the overall demand for public transport services for people with similar needs to ensure better overall use of resources. As changes and improvements are introduced to services during the pilot, there will be ongoing evaluation of the new arrangements and an evaluation report will be produced by late 2014. In addition to identifying the processes and arrangements that have worked well in relation to operational efficiency and improvements to services for passengers, the evaluation will also consider the areas which have been more difficult to resolve and make proposals on how these can be addressed in the long term. Alongside the work on the evaluation report, it is envisaged that the departments involved will undertake an economic appraisal to examine the options for wider implementation of the concepts tested during the Dungannon pilot. This will include the costs, benefits and proposals of preferred delivery options for public uh, transport in the future. Recognising that user requirements can vary considerably across different, different geographical areas, it will be important for the economic appraisal to make an assessment of how the approach in Dungannon could be implemented on a wider scale across other areas. This may result in a number of other pilot projects being developed across a number of other council areas in the future. Account will also need to be taken of how any constraints such as legislation, funding and current delivery arrangements can be addressed to provide for a more effective and joined up approach for the delivery of public transport services. The economic appraisal will also be completed by late 2014. Uh, just before I call Kieran McCarthy, the Minister has come to the table to ask for more time uh, on a particular question. And I can understand understanding orders Ministers can ask for more time and they're granted more time. So the Minister, and having two minutes, the Minister now has three minutes. So just to clarify that to the House, because I saw some members looking at the clock. But the Minister did come to the table to ask for more time. And I keep saying to the House, well, sometimes on the nature of the question, Ministers need more time. Keir McCarthy. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much, and thank you very much for that very important information. Because I was one of the ones that was looking at the clock, I was just wondering when I was going to get a, a, a space to put a, a supplementary to the minister. But in the back of all that he said, and he did, he did mention rural community transport a number of occasions, and that's my concern. And I'm just simply asking the minister, will he commit to uh, and any savings that he makes in the process? He mentioned Dungannon; it's a bit away from Strangford, but nevertheless, uh, will he uh, use those savings? to bolster up and prompt up community and rural transport throughout Northern Ireland. Uh, grateful to the member for his uh, uh, supplementary qu uh, question. And, 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 uh, can, can I also say to him, uh, it, it's not simply uh, about saving money. This is about providing uh, better services as we move into the future. And I think that's, that's a very important consideration. So, the, uh, obviously, uh, over the next few months, the evaluations will need uh, to take place and uh, the detailed analysis. Uh, and we're looking particularly at the Dungannon pilot uh, uh, as an opportunity um, in, in other places. But let's see how that goes. But uh, I, I'm not sure that the, the main thrust of his question that implies that we're simply doing this to save money, uh, it's, it's not uh, purely or exclusively, nor should it be, um, 
uh, for that reason, but to offer better and hopefully improved services uh, in, uh, to the rural area. Thank you. Ian Millen, whose question is grouped, is not in his place. Dominic Bradley, Mr. Bradley. Thanks very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and I would like to ask the Minister, considering the fact that the Minister of Education uh, is conducting a review of uh, school transport, has the Minister of Education been in contact uh, with the Minister uh, in relation to how that review might feed into the current issue? Grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question. And uh, as I think I indicated in my uh, answer, uh, certainly at a local level and at, uh, at both health trust level and education board level, there is uh, a significant cooperation um, being um, exchanged between uh, my departmental responsibilities, including TransLink uh, and others. So um, that, I think, is a good thing, uh, and I think it is a very necessary thing. I uh, understand the, the point that the member uh, makes, uh, but I think that's, that's, a, that's at a more high-level uh, engagement, uh, which is probably um, uh, not as immediately necessary until we begin to see the evaluation and the results and the rollout as to how progress is being made. Tom Elliott. Mr Elliott. Uh, question number two, Mr Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, the, the failure to secure the necessary additional funding for the project, the Narrowater Bridge project, despite extensions being granted to do so, presents the Executive with a stark reality in EU funding terms. That reality, quite simply, is use it or lose it. The latter option must not be allowed to happen. My department is ready to, exist, uh, to assist the Executive to avoid the loss of this funding. In that respect, my department has a proven track record uh, in drawing down and effectively spending out European funds. My department has rec recently been approached by SEUPB, which is now urgently seeking to divert the unspent narrow water bridge funds into contingency projects and plug the funding gap. SEUBP in seeking projects which meet the spe specific requirements of the Interreg 4 funding programme in as much as they can uh, demonstrate clear cross-border benefits and could be delivered uh, within the EU prescribed timescales. One such project uh, relates to the upgrading of the enterprise train running between Belfast and Dublin. Last week, officials from my department had discussions with the SEUPB, DFP, TransLink and DT, DTTAS with the intention of preparing a project application. There are, of course, still several hurdles to overcome before any project can be formally funded, including uh, the securing of the obligatory SEUPB and Interreg Steering Committee approvals and a letter of offer. With this in mind, I intend to discuss these procedural issues with SEUPB in the next few days to facilitate progress. The enterprise project is well positioned. The, uh, the economic appraisal has been approved. Uh, the project is mature. TransLink has great experience in delivering these, project, these type of projects. I can therefore answer my colleague with a definitive yes to the question as to whether or not my department can assist, and I will in the expectation of cooperation and co collaboration from everyone, uh, uh, make sure that these funds are not lost to the people of Northern Ireland. Tom Elliott. Mr Elliott. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker, and I thank the, the Minister for that. He, he has highlighted one scheme that the, the money could be redirected to can he indicate uh, if that would utilise all of that money, or indeed if there are any other projects that he may be able to put the money into, including the Southern Bypass and Enniskillen? Grateful to the, to the member uh, uh, for his supplementary question, and at the end of the day, all politics is local. Um, uh, can I say that uh, the, the, the enterprise, um, the work to the enterprise, uh, would be, I suppose, the most uh, significant um, project that is potentially available to us? I am. Uh, however, uh, aware of others, uh, and uh, I, I believe there is um, a scheme being brought forward by the authorities in the Republic of Ireland uh, for the maintenance of the Boyne Viaduct, and of course the Boyne uh, uh, will always have special significance uh, to those of us here. Late lamented comedian James Young used to say, we won the battle but they got the river. Um, but at least they're looking after it, I suppose. Um, so there are other projects available. Enterprise, the, enterprise, the work to the enterprise seems to be 
uh, the, the one that uh, we as a department are most interested in moving forward. Uh, he mentioned uh, the road scheme, uh, the F4 uh, scheme uh, around Enniskillen. It's not currently a candidate for this, but he constantly reminds me uh, of the pressing need for it uh, on a constituency basis, uh, and I have not forgotten about it. Katrina Ryan. And thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, would the Minister agree with me that the bridge provides uh, enormous opportunity for the Down, Newry and Armagh uh, area and Loud area? And would he join with me in encouraging all parties in the executive? Our party is willing to uh, provide funding for uh, the bridge, joining with all parties in the executive to ensure that the European money is used for the bridge. Well, I'm grateful to the, to the member for her supplementary question. I understand uh, her position uh, 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 on the situation, but I do have to say the situation has now moved on. SEUPP have withdrawn their letter of offer, and as such, the bridge project is no longer on the table. What is essential, in my view, and I think it is a view shared, I hope, uh, by my executive colleagues, is that we proceed to ensure that, mo that European money, which can be expended on projects in Northern Ireland, uh, and a joint nature with the Irish Republic, uh, is fully utilised. And that's why I, uh, my, my main concentration, I have to say respectfully to the member, is that we proceed on that basis to ensure that that European money is not lost or its benefits lost to the people of Northern Ireland. Sean Rogers. Mr. Thank Rogers. You, Mr. Speaker, and thanks to the Minister for his statement thus far, or his answers. Minister, in terms of uh, disappointments with the A5 and the Narrow Water Bridge, what discussions have you had uh, with your counterpart in Dublin, and what are your plans for developing the, the cross border road infra cross border infrastructure? I know you've talked about the enterprise, but what about the Southern Relief Road in Uri as well? Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member uh, for a supplementary question, uh, and indeed, uh, we, we have had, I have had discussions with my counterpart uh, in the Irish Republic uh, in, in relation to both uh, the, the A5 project, and the member will know that it, it, it is, the status of it remains a delayed project rather than an abandoned project. Uh, the, the issues around Narrowwater Bridge are now well documented and should be fully understood. And I know the member, uh, though disappointed, will, will now have an understanding of the situation we find ourselves in. What I'm um, uh, attempting to do in cooperation and consultation, uh, both with TransLink and uh, with, with Irish Rail, uh, is to bring forward uh, this particular project um, around the enterprise. I believe there are benefits, significant benefits. Uh, that could be accrued uh, by moving forward with that project, uh, and I hope and expect that we will have the full cooperation of the Irish administration. Mr. Mackay. Mr. Mackay. Clear question number three. Case number three. Mr. Speaker, my department and uh, the Department for Agriculture and Rural Development cooperate in the provision of community transport in rural areas by funding and administering the Assisted Rural Travel Scheme which allows members of rural community transport partnerships who hold a concessionary fare pass to receive free transport, fr transport when using dial and lift services provided by the partnerships. That is, the scheme allows free use of community transport for those over 60 years of age in areas where public transport is limited. This scheme aims to assist with the uh, programme for government target, targets by making a positive contribution uh, to tackling poverty and social isolation. It's consistent with the regional transportation strategy and with DARD's tackling rural poverty and social isolation framework. Last year, the scheme provided nearly 200,000 journeys. DARD funds the subsidised fur element of the scheme. My department funds the operational costs incurred by the rural transport partnerships. My department, uh, the Public Health Agency, the Department for Agriculture and Rural Development and other agencies cooperate in a special uh, initiative to, maxi to maximise access and, uh, the, and, uh, to, and the uptake of services, grants uh, and, rural, and benefits in rural areas projects. The project contains five strands, including rural transport, with an objective to deliver a, and develop a range of action, actions to address rural poverty and social exclusion. This links with the primary objective of my department's Rural Transport Fund, to reduce social uh, exclusion by improving and providing transport opportunities for people with reduced mobility in rural areas.
Dahi Mackay. Mr Mackay. I can correct and I thank the Minister for his answer. Uh, and can I say certainly from my position, my party's position, this is a service that needs uh, to be protected. And along those lines, can I ask the Minister, uh, can he assure uh, the House, can I give a concrete assurance to the House uh, that he will maintain and actually increase uh, the £3.2 million pounds per annum uh, that is provided to RTPs, which is actually uh, quite minute uh, in comparison to the amount of money that is given to TransLink uh, every year? Well, I uh, thank the member for his uh, supplementary question. And of course, uh, I, I can assure him that we will continue to evaluate um, the, uh, the, the services that, that are provided. I think I'm encouraged by the numbers using it. I'm encouraged by the quality of the service. Uh, I need no um, convincing as to its importance to uh, rural communities. Uh, and I very much hope that uh, as we move into the future, uh, that we will uh, have ongoing support for it, uh, particularly um, at, uh, at executive level. John Dallet. Uh, Mr Speaker, I thank the Minister for his answers. W would the Minister agree with me that in many rural areas, a TransLink bus is about as useful as a nice train and a motorbike at the North West 200 if it is not linked with community transport? Is he satisfied with the level of cooperation he's getting from the Department of Agriculture to make the integration more complete? Grateful to the um, member for his supplementary, and I understand entirely the, the point that he makes. Um, and I think uh, better cooperation, better collaboration, better integration of services, um, because you know uh, uh, the rural community. Uh, can, uh, in many ways, be isolated, and it is important that we, uh, that we make uh, uh, strenuous efforts to, to improve that and to ensure that um, our, our, our public transport systems are, are, are not just uh, urban-based or particularly um, Belfast-based. So I am um, uh, keenly aware of the, uh, of the need to work with others, including uh, the Department of uh, Agriculture and Rural Development, and uh, my, my officials seek to do so on an ongoing basis. Mervyn Storey. Mr Storey. Thank you, Mr Speaker. In relation to the issue of rural transport, what discussions is the Minister having with TransLink to ensure that having access to public transport is a priority, but also so that there is a joined-up approach in regards to, for example, in my own North Antrim constituency, where rural people, uh, having had poor access to public transport, then find it difficult to get a connection with the rail service uh, from either Ballymoney or Ballymena. So what discussions is being had so that TransLink, rather than depending on RDPs or other, other public uh, sector uh, bodies, uh, the TransLink as an organisation is playing its key role in that issue? Can I say that? I uh, thank the member for his supplementary question, uh, and, uh, and I understand absolutely the need uh, for a coordinated approach and for, um, for, for TransLink to be uh, the leading proponent of, uh, of that coordination. And of course, the member will know that um, we, we have sought to improve uh, park and ride facilities uh, at, at various locations uh, for, for bus and train users. And, uh, uh, we will continue to, to try and roll out and improve that, uh, uh, that campaign. So um, we are aware of the need for, for coordination and, uh, and cooperation, and that is uh, that's very much uh, the remit of, 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 of TransLink and indeed uh, of uh, me as Minister and my departmental officials as we move forward. Question number four has already been answered. Paul Gibbon. Question number five. Uh, Mr Speaker, my department does not maintain records and analysis of maintenance spend on a constituency basis. However, I can advise the member that maintenance responsibilities for the South Antrim constituency are shared between the eastern and northern divisions of my department's road service. Expenditure in 2012-13 on structural maintenance, which includes resurfacing, surface dressing, patching and structural maintenance, was approximately £23 million in the eastern division and approximately £25 million in the northern division elements of which will have been directed to South Antrim. For example, within the last 12 months, my department has completed approximately 20 kilometres of carriageway resurfacing at a number of locations in the South Antrim constituency, including the A57 Antrim Road, Antrim, Station Road, White Abbey, Monkstown Avenue and Beverley Road in Newton Abbey, uh, and the A6 Belfast Road, 
um, island bond, uh, amongst others, at a cost of approximately £2.6 million. Paul Gervin. Thank you. Uh, I thank the Minister for his answer. But in doing so, I wonder, in relation to a, a major road project which is underway, which is the duelling of the A8, and as a consequence of that, a lot of traffic is being diverted onto B roads, uh, small, minor B roads, and uh, the increased traffic of the wrong, wrong type, probably, uh, on those roads has had a major impact upon the, the, the condition of them. And is there any plan to resurface those roads after the completion of this total project? I'm grateful to the, uh, to the point that the, members make, uh, that the member makes. Uh, and of course, the AAH scheme is, uh, is a very valuable scheme and a very important scheme. And it's important to uh, that uh, particular region. Uh, and it will have the capacity to open up, um, certainly, uh, and improve access to places such as uh, uh, the Port of Larne. Um, and I suppose there is a consequence that you, you, you can't make omelettes without breaking eggs. Um, and there is uh, obviously going to be um, a consequence to um, some of the, the travelling habits. Now, in terms of, of overall structural maintenance to date, we've, we've, uh, the, the current budget has, has amounted to some £104 million. We very much hope, uh, and I uh, sound op optimistically, if the, if the Minister for Finance is listening, that we could take perhaps more in, in January monitoring to, to, to help us with that, because current calculations are that we need £129 million per year simply to maintain the roads that we have. That's not to build new roads like the A8 or the A2 or as we move forward, the Macrofelt Bypass, or indeed the A26 at Frosses. So, you know, as well as the uh, impressive list of, of, of projects that we, we intend to bring forward, uh, there, there is the job of, of, of the maintenance and the structure to the roads, and of course, increased traffic um, on, on, the, on the more minor roads will um, uh, create worrying uh, conditions, perhaps, uh, for that. So we will seek uh, to get more money uh, to, and to use it wisely. Danny Kennehan. Mr. Kennehan. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I thank the Minister for his answer so far and his uh, staff for their work in South Antrim. Um, uh, we had a lot of great things going on for us, and I know he'll do more for us, particularly over the A8. But could the Minister detail what the outturn has been for structural maintenance in 2011 12 and 12 13? Well, I thank the member for his uh, uh, encouragement uh, and for his comments, particularly to, to, to staff. Um, the structural uh, maintenance expenditure was 120 million in 2011-12 and 109 million in 2012-13. Um, after uh, a less than successful uh, October monitoring, uh, th this year will depend on the outcome of the January monitoring. Uh, but I suppose the downside of that, it leaves less time at the end of the year to undertake work. It is an issue that, that, that I uh, continue. Uh, to raise with executive colleagues, per, uh, particularly um, the finance minister, in that um, whilst we are a department that is willing and able to spend money relatively quickly, um, there would be more sense uh, if we were allowed more time to better plan that expenditure, and it would certainly help uh, those on the ground, the, the many uh, contractors and, and those in the road construction industry. Um, who now face the prospect of, of, of a late surge of contracts having to be carried out by the end of the financial year. So the member's point is well made. Chris Little. Mr. Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Question number six. Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, I do not hold uh, information on the budget allocated for cycling in other sub-member state regions uh, and therefore could not compare with them on the funding allocated in Northern Ireland. In the current budget period, um, over £4 million is earmarked to fund active travel demonstration projects in Belfast, Londonderry, Craigavon and Strabane. In addition, 50000 has been committed <coughs> me, to undertake a feasibility study into a cycle pedestrian footbridge uh, to Ormo Park over the River Lagan, close to the gasworks site. Uh, while uh, these investments are important in promoting sustainable transport and are welcome, I believe that they are not enough. Uh, I want to encourage walking and cycling uh, as feasible, reasonable and safe modes of travel and to invest more in cycling as a key element of transport strategy and delivery. So therefore I have established, as the member will know, a new cycling unit in my department to promote this 
and to deliver the effective coordination and management of a range of cycling initiatives. Officials in my department are currently exploring budget and resource requirements to ensure that the necessary funding is secured to deliver the department's objectives. Given that the unit has been set up a year, the annual budget is, is, is estimated at around 800,000 for staffing and promotional costs. Discussions are underway to identify what additional resource budget is required and the capital funding necessary for infrastructure measures. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the Minister for his answer, but I find it startling that he has made no attempt whatsoever to benchmark the public investment in cycling in Northern Ireland with any other region in Europe. And I'm not sure how he's going to encourage cycling and walking if he doesn't know whether or not the investment that he's making in those is adequate. Can I ask the Minister, would he accept that for successful development of cycling as an active, sustainable mode of transport, uh, in places like Amsterdam and Copenhagen, that significant, bold, courageous public investment was required, and ask him how exactly he's going to deliver that here in Northern Ireland. And I thank the member for his uh, supplementary question. And I'm sorry that uh, he um, has been something of a wet blanket uh, on uh, uh, the news that we have a cycling uh, unit established. Uh, member is, uh, as I understand, the chair of the all-party cycling group. I would have thought it had been incumbent on him to, to, to further encourage me and to ensure that uh, and to uh, uh, speak with his executive colleagues so that we could get the maximum uh, 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 money available to us. And moving forward, I, I, I am in favour of a cycling revolution. I want to see more people uh, cycle. Uh, and I think we have an, uh, an ideal opportunity next year with the Giro d'Italia. Be, uh, the, the, the start of that race being hosted in Northern Ireland. I think we can promote that as an event, but we can also promote cycling um, to the extent uh, to, uh, to leave it as a legacy project for the Giro d'Italia. Uh, and so I'm enthusiastic, and I don't want to be a weeping Jeremiah, and I don't want to, to, to say, well, we can't do that. We want to move forward in this, and I'm keen to see progress and I just want to encourage the chair of the All Party Cycling Group that uh, really um, he needs to give it a good shove too. Jimmy Spratt, Mr. Spratt. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, can I congratulate the minister because I know he does get on his bike a few times uh, in, in the past. But can I ask the minister? And he know the committee's uh, interest in this matter as well uh, in relation to the great economic benefits that's brought. Uh, and also that it's a cross-cutting issue in terms of health uh, and in terms of other areas within government. Can I ask the Minister if he has had any discussions uh, with other departments uh, in relation to increasing cycling and to increase uh, the economic benefits to the economy in Northern Ireland? Grateful to the Member, uh, the Chair of the Regional Development Committee, uh, for, for his encouragement and for his positive uh, uh, attitude towards it. And, and yes, indeed, there are huge benefits, both to the environment, both to health, uh, and to uh, indeed sport. So uh, um, uh, I have been engaging and attempting to engage uh, with, with other departments uh, in relation to those benefits. And I know that the health minister uh, is interested in seeing how cycling can improve uh, healthier lifestyles, particularly for young people. Um, but, of course, um, uh, the, the bottom line is uh, we've got to invest in that, and it means more money. And that means that I, I have to win that argument around the executive table to ensure that the, the joined-up approach that we're adopting, the, improvements to the, the potential improvements to, to health, to the environment, to, to, to sport, uh, as well as to uh, uh, transport and sustainable uh, transport into the future, can be argued successfully and will mean that additional resources, on a par with other places, can be expended. And I think the best example that we look to is London and Mayor Boris Johnson, uh, the cycling revolution that he has transformed uh, uh, public transport and sustainable modes of transport uh, in uh, our nation's capital. And I look forward to doing that over here. Lynch. Gormay Ogget, can Kolya and the Minister be aware that there is a very uh, progressive scheme, cycle scheme in Dublin? Could I ask the Minister for a progress update on the proposals for a bike scheme, similar bike scheme in Belfast 
and has he any concerns about the scheme? Gurmayogut. Grateful to the member uh, for uh, his supplementary question, and indeed I, I, I have uh, had the opportunity to see it firsthand, the, the, uh, uh, the experience in Dublin. And that is um, Belfast Council, City Council. Uh, we have uh, in part funded Belfast City Council to bring forward a scheme of that nature. Um, in, in Belfast and where uh, officials are, are working with council officials to, to make that happen as quickly as possible because it, it will have benefits for commuters um, hopefully already using public transport and using uh, the quality services now available to them uh, in buses uh, and indeed in trains and as they arrive in Belfast they will be able to hop onto their bike and cycle around to their office or, or, or to their place of work. That is the joined up logic of this. And it's working in other places, and there's no reason why it won't work in Belfast and in Northern Ireland. Order, members, that includes all questions to the Minister for Regional Development. We now move to topical questions to the Minister. And I call Tom Elliott. Mr. Elliott. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, given the, the news this week of the death of former South African President uh, Nelson Mandela, I'm wondering if the Minister for Regional Development will be in attendance at the funeral or if the executive will be officially represented there. Grateful to the uh, member for his uh, topical question. Um, can, I, can I say um, there, there, there's been no executive guidance uh, on, on uh, uh, the uh, arrangements, the funeral arrangements of, of Nelson Mandela um, and I'm able to get, uh, confirm that no discussion uh, has taken place at executive level uh, through written correspondence or whatever uh, on uh, the funeral arrangements and executive uh, representation. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister uh, for that. I, I noted in press reports that the Deputy First Minister was going to officially represent the executive. Can he give us some information on that uh, report? Well, again, I'm grateful to the, to the member for his uh, supplementary question. Um, I, I had uh, initially, it had been my understanding that um, uh, Martin McGuinness had been attending the funeral in a personal capacity. Um, and of course, the member will uh, know that uh, th this House had the opportunity to pay due tribute uh, to the passing of, of, of Mr. Mandela uh, yesterday morning um, uh, in the Assembly. Uh, I'm not uh, aware of what approach is being taken uh, on the funding of his uh, attendance, uh, nor am I aware of the position being adopted by either the Scottish or the Welsh First Ministers. Uh, I, my understanding is that four former, uh, pri the former Prime Ministers uh, and the current Prime Minister and the Prince of Wales are to attend and to represent the United Kingdom uh, as a whole. Uh, many people, uh, I think, across Northern Ireland will understandably feel that it's not appropriate uh, for the Deputy First Minister to attend alone, uh, purporting to represent Northern Ireland, and uh, I certainly find myself sympathetic uh, to that position, uh, now that we've also learned that Mr Gerry Adams will attend uh, some events doesn't improve that situation. Um, I'm also unaware as to whether the First Minister declined an invitation to attend and unaware whether he was content uh, and agreed to the, to the Deputy First Minister representing uh, the Executive or uh, the people of Northern Ireland. To, to the whole House, members should go and read standing orders or topical questions. I mean, topical questions need to relate to the Minister's responsibility within the Department. And I don't know, with the funeral of Nelson Mandela and how that fits in order, order how that fits into the responsibility of the Regional Development Minister. So I'm just warning the whole House. Topical questions need to be, need to be uh, on the responsibility that the Minister has within his department. Order, order. Fry McCann, Mr McCann. Uh, the Minister will be aware that the TNT Open Day takes place on the 13th of December. Uh, has he, the Commission released any details of the preferred criteria? Grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question, and, and indeed the member will know that uh, I have engaged substantially uh, with um, my counterparts in uh, the European Union, uh, 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 Vice President Callas uh, and other senior representatives. Um, the, the Chair of the Transport Committee, uh, Brian Simpson, has been particularly helpful, as indeed have other members, uh, have the Northern Ireland uh, MEPs. 
uh, in respect of all of these issues. I am um, uh, pleased with the progress that we have been able to make in respect of the 10 T proposals. Uh, we we did not win uh, every, every battle, but substantially. Uh, I share the, um, the view of my, my counterpart in the Irish Republic that uh, uh, with the challenges that we were faces, uh, that, that faced us in relation to 10 T, uh, that we have come through it uh, pretty well. Mr. McCann. I think the, the, the Minister is aware that several members of the committee will be travelling uh, to this event. Uh, does it, his department have any suitable projects lined up uh, to max, maximise the potential drawdown of funds? Grateful to the, the member for his supplementary question. And on an ongoing basis, my officials seek to identify suitable projects whereby uh, we can um, uh, attain uh, grant aid. Grant aid uh, for, for the projects themselves, um, opportunities appear to be uh, a little bit more limited, uh, but certainly uh, the funding of, of studies uh, and various uh, consultation uh, exercise and the preparatory work for a lot of important schemes can, um, uh, can, can, uh, uh, can avail of uh, EU funding, uh, and we will seek to do that as a consequence not only of, of next week, but um, as we move into 2014. Mr. Mellon. Good day, uh, Kim Collier. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Could I ask the, uh, the Minister, door to door transport ended on the 31st of March uh, 2013 with disability action now providing interim uh, transport services across the north. Uh, what are the long term plans for this service? I'm grateful to the member. Um, for uh, coming into uh, topical questions, uh, he, he was unfortunately absent uh, for the detailed answer that I had uh, uh, for uh, oral questions. But anyway, um, uh, disability action uh, continue uh, to provide uh, disability action transport services uh, with grant support from the department. Um, it's an interim scheme, uh, a scheme until such time uh, as the department considers how best to address the transport needs for people with disabilities. Um, and of course, the member will know that there has been no reduction uh, in the budget uh, to uh, the door-to-door -door service since it uh, ceased on the 31st of March 2013. Ian Miller. Um, thank you, uh, Minister, for your answer thus far. Um, but it doesn't really. Could you tell me then when it might it give us a time frame as to when the service might be restored? You know, because if interim. Uh, uh, Disability Action is now doing the interim uh, service. You know, surely dis disability needs to know: uh, are there going to be extra funding available for them, or, or whatever? Grateful to the member for his supplementary question. Uh, I think uh, I, I, I can. Uh, I hope I have been able to allay his concerns about uh, any reduction in funding. There hasn't been a, a reduction in funding. Um, Simply, um, what we're assessing, what we're uh, continuing to look at, is how best we can provide this service. It's currently being provided by Disability Action, um, and uh, we're looking at, at, you know, into the longer term, uh, as to should we continue uh, in that way, uh, and if not, how do we tweak it? How do we improve it? Uh, rather than, it's not a question of cutting it, uh, and, and certainly the. Uh, the important thing is that it has not uh, been reduced uh, in its budget spend, and uh, we're satisfied at the, way, uh, at the way it's been handled at the moment. But of course, um, we need to give ongoing consideration to these things. McCarthy. Mr. McCarthy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If the minister was listening to Radio really Ulster this morning, he would have heard of the very uh, sincere worries from our senior citizens about the threat to the senior smart card. Um, will the minister? Um, support the hands-off campaign and will he give a categoric guarantee to this assembly that the smart card will remain come hell or high water? I am very grateful to the member for his supplementary question and I note he did not uh, indicate a, a personal interest. Um, but um, let me say I, I, I am aware of the, benefit, the huge benefits, the huge benefits of the concessionary uh, uh, travel. Uh, uh, system that we have. I think uh, it is greatly used. It allows uh, a great many people to, to travel. It, uh, I think uh, it improves social uh, interchange. And I think there is also huge benefit to the local economy as people uh, undertake journeys. 
And let me say, um, under my watch, let me be absolutely clear, under my watch, I don't intend to fundamentally overhaul or uh, the, uh, the, the concessionary scheme that we have. And, uh, and I hope that that will give considerable comfort to, uh, to the campaigners uh, who are out there, who I understand their concerns. But not under my watch, not under an Ulster Unionist, uh, will there be uh, 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 a cutting or a withdrawal of, of the services that are available under the concessionary, current concessionary transport system? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm delighted that the Minister has given a commitment under his watch that this senior smart pass will, uh, smart pass will remain. Uh, that's very welcome. And I, I, I think, along with the Minister, would um, applaud this Assembly for instigating. There is, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we all take credit for the uh, instigation of a smart pass for our senior citizens in Northern Ireland. Would the Minister agree with me that without the smart pass, uh, a lot of senior citizens would be housebound, they would be out of uh, uh, order, they would be out of uh, sequence, they would be a drain on our health service because of the uh, lack of movement without the smart pass? Grateful to the, to, to, to the member for his um, comments, and, and, and I do agree. I, I think the concession refer scheme and the smart pass uh, have afforded people the opportunity uh, to, 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 uh, to reach out into the wider community, to remain active within the, in the wider community. Uh, and I think, whilst success is many fathers, uh, I think all of us uh, can take pride uh, in, in the fact that we are uh, treating our senior citizens, particularly. Uh, in this fashion. One would always want to do more. One would seek to try uh, and improve it, as undoubtedly we will. But we are um, also mindful of, of the costs involved. But nevertheless, it's a scheme that's working. It's a scheme that's popular. And I have no plans to overhaul it. Question number five and topical. Stephen Agnew is not in his place. Uh, David Hillage. Mr. Hillage. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And continuing Mr. McCarthy's uh, theme of hell or high water, could I ask the Minister of an assessment of sandbag provision in relation to road service and NI water, as uh, some of us during the recent storm uh, period uh, experienced some difficulties? Grateful to the, uh, to the member for his uh, uh, supplementary, uh, for his topical question. Um, obviously, we are into uh, winter. Uh, and uh, we're mindful that whilst the conditions at the moment uh, appear to be very mild, um, we can take nothing for granted, uh, and that's certainly the case uh, as we go forward. Um, the, the, the member will know that um, the issue of sandbags uh, is one that, with the cooperation of, of, of local councils, uh, my department uh, has been working to achieve uh, progress on that. Uh, I'm always interested to hear uh, if there are difficulties um, in, in particular areas, but generally uh, I, I want to see and I want to welcome the, coordinated, the increasing coordinated approach between my department and its agencies and uh, local government on it. Uh, I think we should, as uh, this is the last opportunity um, formally that we know of that the House will meet, and perhaps my last opportunity to, to, to say in the House. Uh, as to how much uh, we appreciate the efforts of those who will be providing winter services, those who will be watching the clock, watching the weather forecast, not perhaps able to enjoy fully uh, the, the, the Christmas hospitality with their families, and the over 300 staff plus the, the private operators who will seek to provide a public service to the people of Northern Ireland by keeping the roads open and by keeping people safe, and, uh, and I want to pay a tribute in advance to those, to the efforts of everyone concerned. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I welcome the uh, Minister's words on the Department's arrangements with local councils. Can the, can the Minister ensure that all sections are on message and all, all sections of the Department, particularly in Eastern Division, as we approach that time? Happy, uh, happy to give that assurance, and, uh, and I know that the, the, the staff, uh, particularly in, in uh, my department and, and its agencies are geared up uh, and adopt a very professional attitude. And I'm pleased that um, increasingly good relationships uh, now exist with local councils. Uh, and I hope very much that as we approach uh, the, the, the heavy winter, then uh, we can work together successfully. Thank you very much indeed. Members, that concludes questions on those regional development. We now